Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Rainer and this is Rainier Books with another edition, the second actually, of the Sunday Sum Up, which today comes to you on a Tuesday, Tuesday, January 18 of 2022. So that's the time stamp. I want to talk about what I have read last week, what I'm currently reading, and also about some things that go on in the world that worry me quite a lot right now. Let's get started. So let's talk about news of the world a little bit. The things that go on around us and that always sort of influence us and our lives and ultimately also our reading. One of the things, of course, is COVID. I know last year there were a couple of books that already dealt with the pandemic and this year it seems there will be a lot of novels, a lot of non-fiction books that will deal with the pandemic, but enough about that. Omicron is having a tsunami here in Sweden. It's impossible to get PCR tests and they have to limit the number of tests now which means that the numbers we are delivering to the Johns Hopkins University, for example, to register the number of infections is lower than it actually is. So I try to isolate, I work from home right now, and I also try to get my food, my groceries, deliver it to my door here, and just take my Corona walks that I did in 2020, and work and read and breathe and eat and sleep. That's about it. And I hope that we get out of this very soon. The second thing that worries me, that worries us in this time is, of course, the situation Russia. Russia, if you're listening. We are not trying to put you in the corner. We're not trying to attack you. A hundred thousand soldiers stand outside the Ukraine ready to continue the invasion of the Ukraine. President Putin has said that Russia doesn't want to invade Ukraine. Yes, it's true, because you already did, Mr. Putin. You already have invaded Crimea. You already have invaded eastern parts of the Ukraine where your rebels and your guns and your weapons stand. So you already have done it. So please don't continue the invasion of Ukraine by invading other parts. Here in Stockholm and in Sweden, we have realized a activity that also has made Swedish army, the Swedish army nervous and the Swedish media nervous. I have seen tanks on the island of Gotland, Swedish tanks that are preparing to protect the island of Gotland in the Baltic Sea because we have had activity of Russian vessels in the Baltic Sea. There are drones that have been seen or registered above the castle in Stockholm, the royal castle, but also above two nuclear plants. So all this is worry, worrying a lot. And why, why does the world need that kind of BS? We don't need it. So Russia, if you're listening, please calm down. And we come down with you. We want to be friends with you because I love the Russian people. I have lived for six months in Russia and this is such a beautiful, such an amazing country with so amazing people with a great hospitality. We should talk. We should have parties together. We shouldn't have this situation. Third one is the tsunami we have. I'm really worried about the island of Tonga. I've never been there and I probably will never get there, but apparently there was a volcano underneath the sea that erupted and a tsunami has cut off Tonga from the rest of the world internet-wise. There's no connection real and we don't know the devastation, what happens. All these islands in the Pacific, they are threatened and they live on a very thin wire. Living on a thin line, that's I think what it's. The Kings have done a beautiful song about that. I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna torture you and torment you with singing that now. But now come to the books, please, Reinhard. This is a book channel, right? So let's go to the books. I have finished three books last week. Uh, I talked about a little bit about CQ, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Rotke that I finished and I'm totally fascinated and I don't know why I start a book 
about loneliness and the beginning of a new year in the middle of a pandemic when we are kind of lonely, when we are kind of isolated. But it shows so much, this book, and I really advise you to read it, it shows so much uh, how we are sort of making ourselves more lonely and isolated each and every day. It's really impossible. And it also gives some um, histories or parts of the history of loneliness because there's also research going on around loneliness. And one of the most devastating and haunting parts of the book is the story of an American researcher who has done research on monkeys who he isolated directly after their birth from their parents, from their peers, from their siblings to study the effects of loneliness. And it's heartbreaking to read this, how these poor monkeys were treated and how they got so incredibly anxious and desperate. And how can we do that to animals? That's how can we do that to ourselves, of course, is the second question. It's a great book, CQ, A Journey Through American Loneliness by Kristen Rutka. A nonfiction book that I finished. Another nonfiction book that I finished last week was Bob Woodward's and Robert Costa's book, Peril. Bob Woodward has written, I don't know how many books about the presidencies of American presidents since Nixon, since he got famous with uh, the water, with discovering and sort of publishing also about the Watergate scandal in the 1970s. And now he has, I think he has written two books about Donald Trump's presidency. And this is the third one at least, or the second one, I don't know exactly. It's called Peril. It's about the American doc democracy in peril, in danger. And it's about the time between the trans, the last months of the per Trump presidency, the months where Joe Biden is sort of wondering, should I run? Shouldn't I run? And then he's running and Trump is carrying on. And we see that developing in the book. And also the, uh, and we have also January 6th in the book with the run, with the, the attempt to destroy American democracy last year at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. This, But I was kind of disappointed. That's why I gave it only two of five stars that I can give on Goodreads, because most of the things I read in this book were already known to me, not maybe in the least bit of detail, but I knew the stories and I sort of remembered a lot that I read, almost two thirds of the book, I could say, I would say, I remembered from reading the New York Times or from watching um, MSNBC and watching uh, ABC and even watching Fox News from time to time to listen to what uh, the others have to say. Um, so that was not such a good reading and I wouldn't really carry on reading Woodward's books or Costa's books if they come in the future. Uh, I would uh, like to have a more inside report if, if there's things that I don't know about the presidency and what really happened. There's one thing actually, which is um, a talk with an American general who is the sort of, I think it's called the chief of staff or the joint chief of the army. Um, they had, this This general had a very interesting discussion with apparently Bob Woodward and also with Nancy Pelosi, which comes in, into the book about uh, a possible attack that Donald Trump could have launched in the final stages of his presidency against China, against someone else, to sort of distract the American public from his loss in the elections. He actually lost, Donald Trump lost the elections, Joe Biden won. And um, this is democracy. And uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry to say that here. So I, I, I'm, I didn't get excited about Peril by Bob Woodward. I have ordered another book that I hopefully get very excited about when I read it. And when it comes to my mailbox, I will talk about it to you in the future. The third book that I finished was, I, I'm back into audio. I try to sort of, um, I want to read more books. I want to listen to more books. Life is short. We know that. And we have other things to do. We have to live. 
And that's why I thought, Rhino, go back to audiobooks because they give you the opportunity to, if you really manage to concentrate, to listen to one book while you walk, while you take your corona walk, while you walk into town, into the town center to, to do anything. So I started listening again and I finished one of the books and it was in German, actually a book that is translated into English. It's a classic. I've talked about this before on the channel. It's from the 1970s from an author who died very early. His name is Jörg Fauser and his book is the classical Rohstoff, which he, I think it's called Roh, yeah, the English title is to be seen here right now. It's translated. I listened to the German, apparently, because I'm German, you know. Why should I read German books in English or why should I listen to German books in English? So I listened to an audiobook version, which is great. A great audiobook version of Jörg Fauser's Rohstoff, read by the actor Lars Eidinger, who does a great job in reading this book. This book is about a author in the 1970s. His name is Harry Gelb. And Harry Gelb is uh, somebody who wants, who aspires to be a writer. He wants to be a writer. He is, for some reason, he is in Istanbul, in the, Turk, in the Turkish city of Istanbul. And he is shooting heroin into his veins, he's shooting opioid, uh, opium in his veins. He's a drug addict. He's living this, this life of the 70s when we had so many drugs. Today we have so many drugs, I know. In the 70s there was this epidemic of people who were shooting. And he's one of those shooters. He's living a life with other German fellows, with other expats who live in Turkey, who are on drugs. And he always dreams about writing his book. He has an old typewriter, he types. And he um, has relationships to young women. As sort of it's a coming-of-age novel in one way of a man in his 20s already who's very much not inspired by the classic German literature that is apparent at the time, but he's inspired a lot by the beat literature of the United States and people like Burroughs and people like Bukowski and uh, people like uh, Ginsburg. So, and, and especially Burroughs is mentioned, I think, 50 times in that novel. So he tries to write like them and he sends his pieces to the um, publishers, he gets rejected, he moves back to Germany, to Frankfurt, has an affair with a girl who is sending his manuscript in first, the whole manuscript, then in pieces to publishers, he has interviews, with, everything of this is descriptive, is narrated in a powerful language that sort of really impressed me a lot when I read it for the first time in the 1980s. And, and that's very seldom with books that I loved like 35 years ago, when I listen to this book now, 35 years later, although I'm not a drug addict, I never injected heroin, luckily, but this book is still getting to me and I still love it. I love the beat, I love the words, I love the melody. I love Jörg Fauser's Rohstoff. He was such a great writer. Unfortunately, he has a pretty small volume of books that he has written during his time. And then he, after, I think after his 40th birthday, he went on a highway at night, at night, drunk at night, and he was run over by a truck and he's dead. So that is Jörg Fauser. Very great experience listening to this book. Again, so now to the books that I'm reading currently. I've started my second graphic novel, and that is In by Will MacPhail. This also has to do a lot with loneliness, but in the fiction style. Will MacPhail is writing um, this book, is drawing and writing this, this book about a character. I have to try to show it to you. About this young man who is living the life of an outsider, and he is desperately trying to get contact with other... He, he likes being alone a lot, but also whenever he's trying to socialize with others, he has huge problems in really connecting to people. They just don't look at him. They just don't answer him. And he has one, there's one beautiful, uh, sad story when he's sitting in the, in the subway. I'm gonna show that to you. Yeah, and he, he's going to these uh, hipster, cafes or hipster. Yeah, he's, he's going to cafes a lot and sits there so lonely. And he's going to this 
It's not funny. He's going to this cafe. And that's called Gentrificato. Gentrificato, he writes, offers an unwelcoming ambience and 12 varieties of milk. Nary one from another. It is managed slash haunted by a collection of Timothy's Chalamet who recommend cactus milk and then refuse to besmirch the coffee with it. The house brew is a mischievous blend with notes of fermented apricot and polished concrete. Price? Harrowing. Wi-Fi password? Edison bulb filament. And this is hilariously good. And there's a second episode that I want to share with you. And here is he's sitting in the subway. And this girl appears and he sits, she sits opposite to him. And um, we have this little exchange. He's drawing her. He's drawing her. And then the woman comes over to him, sits beside him and asks him, excuse me, were you just drawing me? And he says, oh yeah, sorry, I'm actually an artist. And then the woman says, yeah, don't do that. It's really fucking intrusive. You think it's cute because you're drawing instead of taking a picture. It's still gross. So whatever he's doing, he's doing it wrong with other people. I like that. I don't like that, but I like the book. Emily Ratajkowski, the beautiful model and her book, My Body. I still don't know what to make of this book and I haven't finished it yet, but um, Emily Ratajkowski is a very smart young woman. She's born in 1991, I learned now. I didn't know anything about her. I knew that she was supporting and um, Bernie Sanders in the American presidential election of 2020. She sort of went out for him and tried to um, help his, his, his cause. She has amazingly 28.8 million followers on Instagram. 28.8 million. It means that every word that she says is money. If she would, Emily, if you're listening to that Ems, Emski, please tell the people on your Instagram that they should subscribe to Rainier Books and I'm sure I would have 200,000 subscribers tomorrow. That would be great. She's an influencer. Emily Ratajkowski is an influencer and I love her. Emily, please, you heard what I said. But this book is about her body a lot. It's called My Body. Um, she's able to really write a good essay. That's the first thing. She writes good essays. No question about it. But it's a lot, a lot about the female body and especially her female body. Uh, which is sort of used, which is which is um, regarded, which is uh, used not only by the public, by men, of course. Right now I'm reading um, an essay called Transactions, and that's where a rich Asian, you know those rich Asians, that's where a young rich Asian man pays her $25,000 to accompany her, him, to accompany him to the Super Bowl final in 2014, when she was 23 years old, and she goes with that guy. She's not alone. There are others uh, who are also being paid to go with this guy to the Super Bowl, and um, it's a transaction. You know, she gets the money, and he gets the sort of company of these beautiful young people, and she's telling other stories about parties and this. And I really like the way she writes, but I'm still looking a bit for the so what. Why are you telling this, Emily? Apart from the fact that you are really telling us good story and that you are good, yet you are a good writer. You know how to write. So, Emily, thank you about my channel. Honestly, the best book that I'm reading right now, it's always, you know, please tell me in the comments below, if you're also someone who reads or listens to several books at a time, I do that. And the third book that I'm reading right now is my favorite. It's my darling right now. And this is an, an author that I didn't know of. I think I heard about him on Savages, Simon Savages' channel, when Simon was talking about the author. It's about the Booker Prize winner of 2005, I think, John Banville. And this book is called April in Spain. And John Banville is um, born in Wexford, Ireland in 1945. Yeah, 
He's the author of 18 novels, including The Book of Evidence, The Sea, which won the 2005 Man Booker Cr Prize. Now he has written a series of crime novels with a man called Quirk that I meet for the first time. And Quirk is a pathologist. And Quirk is from Ireland. He's married to a Austrian woman who went very early in her life to Ireland. But there's some German words from time to time. Um, but the greatest thing about Banville is that he creates, he's so much talented, I have only read 64 pages, but this man is able to create an atmosphere, to create this band, Cork and his wife, they are on a holiday in Spain. Take a holiday in Spain, flush your worries down the drain. So take a holiday in Spain. That's Counting Crows, one of my favorite bands from San Francisco. But April in Spain, it's really, it's a, probably a crime novel because I haven't found the crime yet. It's slowly building up to that point. Um, because Quark and his wife, they are in Spain, they are on a holiday, and they're suddenly, Quark hears a voice somewhere, an Irish voice, a voice with an Irish accent, who says the word theater in an Irish way. I don't know how to pronounce theater in an Irish way, but nevertheless, Quark recalls that moment hours later when this girl says theater and then he sort of sees her face in the night uh, when he remembers that that scene and he realizes that this woman reminds him of a woman that was a friend of his daughter's but that friend of his daughter should be dead and that's probably where the crime story will set in but Banville is really creating this atmosphere he has he's depicting great characters Quirk and his wife they are described in uh, very accurately and living flash characters, so to speak. And it's also the atmosphere of this beautiful town in Spain. And everything is, you can smell, you can see, you can, you can feel almost the atmosphere where this book is playing out. And that's what I really love. It, it's, I'm immersed into April in Spain by John Banville. A book that actually was published last year, so it's pretty new, 2021. This is what I'm reading today, what I'm reading currently, what I hope to finish maybe this week, one or two of them. I hope that you have a good reading week and I hope that you have comments down below about what you are reading and what you plan to read in the near future, how everything is for you. And I hope that you like this video. I hope that I see you very soon again and Emily, Subscribe to the channel and please um, post me on your Instagram. Thank you very much and see you. Bye-bye.